So I'll be presenting breathing life into icons. So how do we breathe life into icons? Well, icons are essentially images, right? So how do we do that? We do it with animation. <laughs> so before I go into the fun part of this presentation, which is a demo of how we're gonna animate our icons, let's take a little bit of a closer look at what's happening with our icons. So we've all seen them on the web, on apps, but these icons are a little bit special. So most images that we interact with are PNGs, GIFs, GIFs, um, JPEGs, sorry, my brain. Um, but these are SVGs. So what is so special about SVGs? Okay, let's first take a step back and take a look at what um, PNGs, JPEGs, and GIFs are. So they rasterized image or bitmaps. And essentially they are a grid of pixels and the pixels are essentially displaying what a color is. So that's what we see with the image. So if you can see, if we zoom in, those are the pixels. Vector images are a little bit different. It's essentially a list of like, instructions. It's how to draw the shapes geometrically. And what's unique about them is that you can scale them infinitely because since they're lost in instructions, they just redraw every single time. So why is it special? It's because it's technically XML under the hood. It's code. So we can do really cool things like styling. So we can change the color, we can change the size, we can add animation. So I'm going to be demonstrating a tool called Shapeshifter. It's open source. However, I have to make a note that at the time I wasn't aware of this. Um, Shapeshifter is actually more centralized around Android and exports to vector drawables and um, animated vector drawables. However, you can still use it for the web, but it doesn't necessarily export CSS code like I was expecting, but we can still use it and it's still fun. So let's check it out, okay? So here's the links to Shapeshifter, the person that created it. And he also did a write-up on how essentially SVGs work and how we animate them. So demo time, and as tradition, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I kind of timed myself when I did a previous um, run through of this, and it took me like about 15 minutes to do this. So I'm going to just speed it up a bit. And uh, like I said, I, this is not <laughs> my computer. So I forgot where everything is. Boop, boop, boop. So I'm going to just start off with the base. OK. So yeah, I created a website. Nothing too special. It has a navigation bar on the side. That doesn't work, <laughs> but that's beside the point. What we essentially want to do is make this button a little bit more interesting. So I was thinking maybe when it's closed, it's just a hamburger menu, and then when we open it, it turns into an X. Okay. So I've already created my hamburger menu. Not too complicated. Uh, can I move these? No. I don't know how to. <laughs> just minimize it. Oh, okay, but it's still in my way. But anyways, so um, all we essentially did is that we created parts. So I'll show you now how you can essentially create a path because now we're going to create our X. Okay, and since I'm too lazy to try figure out where the starting and ending points of our X is, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So what I'm going to do is grab my middle line because we know that our X is going to pivot in the middle, essentially. So I'm going to pop this in here. So a little bit of backstory about how um, the parts work in SVGs. So M is essentially saying this is my drawing start. Four is basically my starting point in X and Y value. L means I just want to draw a line. It is case sensitive. So if you use a lowercase L, it means I will draw it relative to the starting point or your last point. And a capital L means a specific coordinate. So I'm just telling you that I want it to go to um, 20X and 12 done, okay? And then Z just means that that's the end of my path, okay? So since these are lines, we're not gonna use fill. We're going to use stroke. Let's just make it red and give it a width of two. 
Cool. So I'm going to create another one. Same thing. Just going to copy and paste it. And then let's just make it. And then okay. So with Shapeshifter, um, how it works is that groups is where you can do your rotation, your scale, and your translation animations. And paths are essentially any types of path animations. There's like a list of examples. You can change the color, you can make them fade in and fade out, stuff like that. So since I'm a bit lazy and I want to create an X, I'm just going to drag the two. Oopsie, I didn't mean to do that. Create another group. Drag that one in there. So as you can see, this is a 24 by 24. So our middle point will be exactly 12. So let's go to our group and make up a little 12, 12, and rotate about 45. And sorry, I'm just going to move this. So I've got more space to actually move this. And go back to the other group. And we do the same here. We go 12, 12, and just make that 45. Okay, we've got our X. Right. So you'll see what I mean now. So I'm going to quickly, so you actually have the choice of flattening it. I don't know why you lose your width though. So we'll just change this back to two. And as you can see, I wasn't going to try to figure out where that starting point was. <laughs> but hell no. <laughs> so that's why I kind of made this little bit of a cheat around. And what's also really nice about this is that I'm now going to take advantage of showing you the path animation. So Shape Shifter, why a lot of people are like using it is because it's really nice for morphing animations with FG, um, SVGs because SVGs has various points and it becomes a little bit problematic if the thing that you're trying to morph to doesn't have the same number of points. In this case, we don't have this problem, but this is why a lot of people tend to use this tool because it actually has a um, magic tool that actually adds in additional points to help with your morphing. Um, if you ever want to check those out, they do have a demo section if you wanted to see how that morphing works. Maybe I'll show it at the end. But let's get on with our little X. So what I'm going to do is I essentially want the two top rows to move down and I want the bottom one to move up to the other side of the X. So I'm going to quickly just make part data. So it's saying what you want to morph from and what you want to morph to. So I want to morph to this one. Still this one's path data. Go here. And then boom, we already have one of our animations. So let's do it the same for the second one. Add, yeah. add path data. Boom, we have our second one. Put that down. And then our last line, we want to map it up to this line here. So grab that, grab my last line, add path data. Here we go. Well done. Oh, oopsie. <laughs> so it is the other one I need to map it to. Yeah, that one. So that was a bit of a potato moment. <laughs> um, grab that one. Well done, you've just created an animation. Okay, so we don't need our little X anymore. And if we play this, it's super fast. So we want the user to be able to read it. So I'm gonna just add 700. And then we're going to just stretch these guys out. Okay, start from the beginning. Ta -da! Okay, so like I said, this is more focused towards um, Android development. However, if anyone has worked with sprite sheets, um, what we can do is that we can export it as a spreadsheet and then put that into the web. So let's do that. I'm going to export. And once again, I don't know how to use this. <laughs> so I'm just going to grab that and go to a little demo file. And just copy. 
anything. So let's go to let's just drag it into that and then drag it. Sorry about this. <laughs> and then extract it. And then let's just grab these guys. So it creates um, three files. It's your spreadsheet, um, and HTML to demonstrate that spreadsheet, and then the CSS that shows the spreadsheet. So we click here, and let's see. I'm more used to um, my Mac, so click here, click here, and we zoom in. We have our animation. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to quickly grab these guys here, pull them here, and just like beef up our little demo website. So I want it to be white. So it's like I said before, we can do some styling to the SVG. So what I'm going to do, as you can see, they're storing the stroke color inside of these G tags. So I'm quickly just going to add a style tag. And then we're just gonna say, you go the G. Let me just really go with things. Okay, set, and it should be white now. Okay, well, oh yeah, I moved it, that's why. <laughs> Sorry. The amount of windows that are going to be open after this is going to be very fun. <laughs> and if we go back to our HTML, the reason why we can't see it is because it's white. I could change the background, but let's not hold up more time. So here's the CSS. And what they've done is that, um, like we said, we're using it as a spreadsheet. So essentially what it's doing is that it's moving the coordinates across um, to generate our spreadsheet. And what we're going to do is that I also wanted to play in reverse. So I'm going to just grab this, make a copy of it. Oopsie, I don't need that. And then we can just make that 100, make that zero. And we also wanted to stop on the last frame that it's on. So in this case, I'm going to tell it after you've done your animation, stop on the last position. Okay. And if we can I open it in the browser yet, okay, it's fine because it's white anyways. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this line, which not. So I had a demo one here, so I'm just going to grab the name. Sorry, <laughs> it's just my brain is like what? Okay, <laughs> and. If we go back to our, it's not demo, but here it is. Okay, it's not playing. Oh yeah, also not playing the code. So I've changed it to our current image. So what I wanted to do is that I want to toggle the map and I'm going to create this over here. Then I just wrote some code. So go back to our CSS and we got our play. And then we're going to just create another one called reverse. And we want it to be. So let me just check. Oh, and then we're just going to add the CSS file here to our demo one at the top. Save. What could possibly go wrong, right? Okay, it's a little bit buggy, but there we go, guys.
And just a little bit, can I show my other stuff? So a little bit of a humble brag. Um, I was kind of playing around with some other <laughs> SVGs. So what's really cool is that the Hives icon is an SVG. So I kind of took advantage of that and I decided to animate it. Um, you can also get some SVGs from Material Design, Fonts Awesome. You might have seen those as well. Um, so I also played around with one of those. So um, I didn't finish this one though, but it's just a little drawing animation of our little pen. And then this one's a little bit, helps if I could spell. <laughs> and yeah, have some fun with it, guys.